Here is the workhorse of the hydraulic system, the hydraulic cylinder. In every system, you have a power supply, some kind of control, and then some kind of output. In other words, a motor and a pump, some kind of valves, and the output is where you find the actuators. Last time we looked at hydraulic motors, which are rotary actuators. This time we're looking at hydraulic cylinders, which are linear actuators. In other words, a cylinder takes the pressure in the hydraulic fluid and translates it into linear motion. It extends and retracts. It pushes and pulls. In most hydraulic cylinders, there are two ports. A port is an opening where the oil comes in and goes out. This is a double acting cylinder. So uh, there's a port where oil comes in and as it pushes against the bottom of the piston, it makes the cylinder extend, makes the rod come out here. And then it, when you're ready to retract the cylinder, you change the valve position oil comes in the port at the rod end and it presses on the piston and drives the thing back down. And as you saw in an earlier, I think a couple of weeks ago, uh, this end is typically known as the piston end and this end is typically known as the rod end. There is such a thing as a single acting cylinder and if you've ever um, used a hydraulic jack to lift up a uh, foundation, you know, lift up beams under a house, for example, that was a single acting cylinder. And what that means is oil comes in the piston end and lifts the thing up, but nothing makes the oil restract, retract. You need some kind of load, some kind of weight pressing down on it to drive that oil back out. So if you're jacking up a house, when you release the valve, then the weight of the house presses back down. Or if you're doing a truck, the weight of the truck presses back down. But most cylinders in hydraulic systems that you will encounter are what you call double acting cylinders. And that means there's there are two ports, as we just mentioned. So there's a port where the oil comes in the piston end and makes the thing extend. And then there's another port, and the oil gets driven out. And then there's another port in the rod end where oil comes in and drives the piston back down and oil squirts out the other port. So that's a double acting cylinder. You can use oil pressure to extend or retract, and you make it change direction like that with a directional control valve, which we'll talk about next time. Here are symbols for cylinders. Notice the single acting cylinder is open in the top end, and it has only one port. And notice how simple this thing is to draw. Here's a double acting cylinder, and notice how simple this thing is to draw as well. It looks just like a single acting, except it's uh, closed along the, the rod end, and it has lines representing two ports. But that's all there is to the symbol. There you are. Double acting cylinders um, retract faster than they extend. And the reason for that is the area here in the rod end is less area, so um, you get less volume in there. Um, and so the same amount of oil can, can push the thing down faster. However, it's less force uh, for reasons that you might remember from a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at force and area. Anyhow, main idea here is they retract faster than they extend. Now, if you need to extend a long, long ways, you might be worried about the rod on your cylinder uh, not being strong enough and bending and maybe buckling under the load. That would be bad. 
So what you use is a telescoping cylinder, uh, just like the name says. It has several barrels, uh, one smaller than the next, and they telescope inside each other. Those are common in uh, dump beds. So here's a, here's a trailer. This isn't a dump bed exactly, but it's a trailer, and you can see how it does that. Here are the symbols for telescoping cylinders, and almost all the time you would probably have a double acting. There is a, a, an unusual kind of cylinder called a double rod cylinder where it's the same size area in both ends. There's not a rod end and a piston end. It's symmetrical. Here's what it looks like in real life. And so you can bring oil in either port and move it at the same speed with either port. And here is the symbol for a double rod cylinder. Sometimes you might want to have the cylinder slow down as it nears the end of its stroke. You know, like a locomotive slowing down as it comes into the station. And if you need that, what you use is a cushion. A cushion is a smaller diameter thingy that fits inside a, a round cavity. Here's a cushion on the rod end of a cylinder. Here's a cushion on the piston end of a cylinder. So it's got a tapered, smaller plunger that gradually fits into this opening. And that will let the stroke uh, slow down as it nears the end. Here's the symbol for a cushion cylinder. Look at that. There is that sloping arrow again, that, th that symbol that we've seen before that tells us something is variable. So here we might think about, okay, the speed is variable, essentially, because um, it, doesn't, it doesn't extend or retract the same speed all the way along. One thing about cylinders is they are full of oil. There's just oil all over the place, and we need a bunch of different kinds of seals to keep, either to keep the oil in or to keep the dirt out. On the rod end, uh, the rod is a shiny polished metal, and uh, out here on the outside of the cylinder, there's dirt. And we need to make sure dirt doesn't attach to that shiny rod and get pulled into the cylinder. So we have uh, wiper seals to, to wipe off that shiny thing. They're actually circular. I should have put in a picture of a circular seal. Uh, you know, so you can see what it looks like. But it's, it's a round thing with a rubbery lip on it. Then you also need a gland seal on the inside to keep the oil from getting out, because obviously you don't want oil leaking either. In places where you have high pressure and uh, not a lot of um, excessive movement, you can use O-rings. O-rings are just rubber donuts, and they smash down flat when they're under pressure. They're handy. Here's a picture of um, a section through an O-ring. Here are some sections through some other kinds of lip seals, wiper seals. So think of uh, you've sliced through a circular seal, and now you're just looking at the end of that, that piece of circular rubber. Oil does a lot of work in this system. Besides being pressurized and making our actuators uh, rotate or extend and retract, they make everything work right. So as the rod goes in and out of the cylinder, it needs to be coated with a thin film of oil um, th th so that you don't have metal to metal basically. So everything is suspended on this this um, film of oil and nothing ever touches anything. The only thing that gets touched is oil molecules. Then all these seals inside the cylinder, they will dry out if we don't keep oil on them. So oil, um, not only do we use seals to keep the oil in and the dirt out, 
but we use oil to keep the seals sealing. When you specify a cylinder, maybe you're, uh, you're designing some assembly and you want to write a certain kind of cylinder on your bill of material, there are two things you'll want to think about. What diameter is it? The bore diameter. And then what is the stroke length? How far will that rod extend? One other interesting thing to know about cylinders is that they come in all different kinds of mounting styles. And throughout these slides, I think a lot of the ones we've seen have been clevises. So a, a clevis has a, you know, two, two uh, arms on each side of a third of a third thing. And finally, here are all the cylinder symbols on one page so you can just see them all at once and to kind of wrap up and compare. And you might want to come back to this slide at the end uh, just to review.